Today is World Water Day and it is themed Nature-Based Solutions for Water. According to the United Nations, over 2 billion people across the world lack potable water. This year's celebration is aimed at demonstrating how nature-based solutions offer a vital means of moving beyond business as usual to address many of the world's water challenges while simultaneously delivering additional benefits. We've been on the Volta River for almost 15 minutes on our way to our flavor. The island community that doesn't have portable water, even though it is surrounded by water. Now we are going to check how they have been able to manage so far, how the water they have has transformed their lives, even though their fishing activities and other livelihoods have been affected by what they used to do. From Adafo to Sugakope, there are many island communities dotted along the Volta River. These communities are surrounded by water, yet, fact is, they consume that water at their own risk. Much of the water is contaminated through fishing, salt mining, and other human activities. It makes a lot of sense to think surrounded by water means you lack none. But some women in Afliver tell me the cost they paid when they used to drink from the Volta River was high. <laughs> Those days, um, our children, when they go to school, the teachers call us, uh, the children are having acute stomach pain or chronic stomach pain, or they are, head in, they, are, they are vomiting up and down every day. There are problems in the school with the school children. Since the, this uh, device was installed, uh, such calls have not come again. Teachers don't call us to uh, tell us our children are in pain or they are sick at school anymore. And we, the parents as well, we don't buy pure water like we used to buy those days. Another issue affecting treatment and distribution of potable water is the tide. According to the residents of Afliver, because they live close to the estuary, the seawater usually mixes up with the river water, thereby making the river water salty. Assembly member for Afliver Azakba Alokwem Electoral Area explains they have now studied the pattern and noticed the tides increase the salt content of the river every two weeks. It's tasty. Mm. So it's it's salty, yeah. Mm -hmm. The salt in it it's salt, comes yeah, the, all the way in. Yes, it's, the salt in it, whenever it's high time, the salt on it eat. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so you can taste it, put it into your mouth, you can see. And also you can, when you see the surface of the river, you see the, the river tend to be some colors. When it's coming, you see there's some colors. It, it's meat, the water has mixed with the salt sea. And so you can see it by seeing it on the river and also testing it when you put it into our mouth. I visited the Ada East District Hospital to speak with the medical superintendent, Dr. Philip Na, on the water situation on the island towns. Normally we have what we call waterborne diseases that we get all the diarrhea, cholera, uh, diarrhea, uh, dysentery, and all those uh, chronic typhoid. We also have what we call uh, Belhazia, when okay. people, that one is mm -hmm. peculiar uh, in this area. So people go to the water to feed, people go and uh, fish and all those in the have. So those were the health conditions that uh, we've been getting. Now that we have these machines, we are doing a study. We haven't concluded it yet, but we are seeing that it is happening. But we want to complete the full study and prove to the world the impact that before it was like this, now it is like this. The treated water has been certified as bacteria free by four government agencies responsible for the sector. Part of our report marking International Water Day. Now, concerns have been raised about the deteriorating quality of water as a result of pollution. And experts are saying that should the situation continue unchecked, the world would witness high water stress by the year 2020. Managing Director of the Ghana Water Company, Engineer Dr. Clifford Abdallah, is saying that this has been speaking uh, on this matter. Joining us on the line now is Emanuela Abla Afokba. She's with our sister station, Adom FM. She was there at the program that the Ghana Water Company Limited has been speaking. Hello, Emanuela. Yeah, hello. What more has he been saying? Well, he's been telling us that um, as of yesterday, um, a team from the Ghana Water Company visited um, 
born, born Shura in the Western region, and uh, one of the workers over there, and they realized that before the time um, the Galante activity became intense, they were using three baths of um, aluminum sulfate to treat the water. But when the activities of um, Galante became intense, they had to use 12 bags of water, um, 12 bags of aluminum sulfate to be able to treat the water mm. before they can give to people. So he's clearly yeah. linking. He's clearly linking this to the, the fight against Galam uh, Galam Se. Yes. And in doing so, he's been saying also that Operation Vanguard is not the way to go. What are the reasons he gave? The reason is basically we're boiling back to the Galam Se activity. He's saying that as when they, they stepped in, they were now using five bags. But as of yesterday, when they went back to check at uh, Bonsara, they, they now have to use ten bags of aluminum sulfate to treat the water. So he's saying that the activity is failing. Is not the way to go. That the way to go now is to get the people involved, the okay. chiefs and the people who live around the water bodies, hmm. to take responsibility and make sure that the water bodies are clean. And he asking that we intensify punishment so that we can win this fight. Because if we are going to keep on um, let others um, get more money due to government say and other people are going to suffer because of water then we'll have to intensify the fight. So um, the activities of the vanguard is not working. Emanuela, thank you for that update. Emanuela Afokba is with our sister station, Adome FM, at the event where the Ghana Water Company Limited is saying that really, Operation Vanguard may not necessarily be the solution, the long-term solution we're all looking for to saving our water bodies from, especially Galamse. Speaking of water and our water bodies, let's look at the Etiwa Forest. It's one of the few upland forest reserves in Ghana that is in danger of being, uh, of, of being exploited by the mining of bauxite. A couple of months ago, government expressed interest in this, but a campaign has been initiated by various groups, including the concerned citizens of Etiwa Landscape and Friends of Etiwa Forest. They're looking to stop government from going ahead with a bauxite mining plan. They presented a petition to the Flagstaff House, urging the president to reconsider their decision there. The, one of them has joined me in the studio. His name is Ejari Dodu. He's an opinion leader uh, with the concerned citizens of Etiwa Landscape. So you're welcome. Thank you, madam. Have you already, you, you've already uh, sent the petition to the Flagstaff House, or is it being done at the, as we speak? It's been done as we speak. Has it been, it's been done yeah, as, as we as speak. speak yeah. How confident are they, though, that anybody is going to uh, listen to them and pay, you know, take their, their petition? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, they went and they, we've heard that they are there, mm -hmm. but we are confidently told that mm. the uh, staff members or those who have to receive them are yeah. over there waiting for them. Okay. Comfort. So you walked all the way from Etiwa? Yeah, we started last uh, Saturday. Saturday. Yes, from Etiwa to be precise, Sajmase, which is the gateway to the forest. Mm. Yes. So, but you look very clean. Do you get to, you stop on the way to dress and then you, like you rest a bit and then you continue walking? No, we don't rest. We do it stage by stage. We started just like I was saying from Sejimansi. Mm -hmm. We came to Kibi. We presented a petition to the Ochenhene. Nana, our Osajifo, Amotia, Ophelfeni. And then the MCE at Kibi. Mm. Then from there, we, we walked up to Apedra. Mm -hmm. There to be handed over a petition to the elders and the chief over there. We proceed further to uh, Asuboy. The third day there to we met the elders. We made a petition known to them mm. while we walking that long, and then they got to know the importance of the Atiwa forest right. in in the form of wa uh, water bodies. So you don't want governments to go ahead with uh, uh, the mining of bauxite. In, in that Etiwa. area, yes, please. No, in not in that area, but not in Etiwa. Not in Etiwa, but not can, in the forest. Yes, but it can be. But done. anywhere in yeah, in Ghana, it can be done. Oh, because it's still going on in Awaso. Okay. They've mined bauxite in Awaso for about seventy-eight years, okay. and it's ongoing. But but isn't there a way of uh, of exploiting the minerals there? to help develop the country, but do so in a responsible way so that we don't deplete uh, the, 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 the natural system, but then we take care of it even as we exploit the minerals there. Well, from what we saw at uh, Awaso, mm -hmm. 
they cannot do it that way because they have to scoop the topsoil mm -hmm. and then take the mineral down, leaving a basin of pit, something like a pit, which can never be filled. Mm. No matter how they bring back the topsoil, it can never be filled. Has it been, been done anywhere? No. But we see how people reclaim, they, they mine gold and they reclaim but, the but, land. But uh, that one, uh, mining of both sides is different from mining of gold. Okay. Yes, how is it different? Different in the sense that uh, bauxite mining, mm -hmm. you're going to scoop all the topsoil and take it away. And then yeah. dig for, dig for, for, for the, bauxite the bauxite itself. Which is also in the form of soil. Mm. Don't you think that if this thing comes to Etiwa, for example, a lot of young people in your area could get jobs, um, you could champion the, the, the appropriate use mm -hmm. of the land there, even though you say it's different. I'm sure there has to be a way. Yeah. From what we saw at uh, Awaso, meaning if they're going to mine, they'll take everything. Okay. Yeah. So that's and eventually, all the water bodies over there mm. will dry up. We hear dry. that with Operation Vanguard now, the water bodies look cleaner than they used to be. Is, isn't it the same in Etiwa? No. The brim is still not clean. Well, we've seen pictures showing they, 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 they are a bit cleaner. Uh, is it at the source or at the entry point? I, I, I don't know exactly where it came from, but we've seen yeah. pictures where people are saying before and after some of us how it looked before near, and after. Some of us living near the forest have seen that the, t the brim is not even clean. Okay, yes. so whilst your colleagues unless, are waiting... Mm -hmm. Unless you go deep into the Atiwa forest where its source is coming from, I that see. you get cleaner water. I see. Whilst you're waiting for your colleagues to uh, send their petition to... Um, the Flagstaff House. What, what are, uh, I mean, this is a platform you can, on which you can speak to government, you can speak to authority, people in authority, etc. So I'm giving you the last words to, to say something. You've yeah. walked very far. Yes. We are pleading with the government, and we know Nana Dankwa is a listening father. From what we've done since last Saturday till today, we, in our petition, we are stating that we're pleading with him to look elsewhere and do the bauxite mining in Ghana, but leave Atiwa and let it be as it is, so that we can develop it into a national park, which can also yield some income for the country. If government and continues to mine in the Etiwa forest, what will you do? Oh, we still we will still pursue and dialogue with the authorities concerned, so that we can still get Atiwa intact for Thank you. generation unborn to come and see it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be here to keep an eye on what government says uh, about your petition, sir. You're welcome. I've been speaking to Ejari Dodu, who's an opinion leader with the concerned citizens of Etiwa landscape. They want government to go ahead and do the bauxite mining, but certainly not anywhere around Etiwa. At the in the meantime, and whilst we speak, they have a petition to present to the Flagstaff House.